All right, so we got Dragon Age, the Felguard exclusive first hands on preview. Let's go to the videos, go, man. It's been 10 long years since Dragon Age. What's up, Alex? And the expectations for the next game in the series. Alex, Dragon baby. Age, the seem impossible. A full decade, a bevy of behind the scenes changes, and an interesting start to its marketing campaign made me a little worried for my most highly anticipated game of the year. I admire you. What you've been through would break most people. Oh. But one of my biggest concerns, based on early previews, was that it could be headed in the direction of being a linear action game, rather than its more open-world predecessor. While Dragon Age is known for changing... Real quick, you guys know I don't pause like that, so, like, you know, don't kill me. But listen, I'm a new booty. I'm a, I'm a newbie, uh, you know, to this franchise, so... I if I'm being honest with you, I, I think it looks kind of good. ...style with each installment, I hoped dearly that it wouldn't lose too much of the DA DNA I fell in love with. After hours of hands-on time spread across two days, I'm pleased to say that I walked away with excitement and curiosity, but mostly relief to wave nice. many of those concerns goodbye. Ha! Ah, let's get right into it! She scared me at first. I was like, what is she talking about? Let's get right into it. Let's go. My time with the Veil Guard covered a wide smattering of things, including the incredibly expansive character oh, that creator, the crazy. introductory quests, a faction mission, and a companion quest a little deeper into the game. But I was mostly pleased with my ability to just explore Northern Thetis and all its gorgeously designed glory. Wow, Experiencing bro. This game looks really Dragon good, bro. ...that we've really only heard about. To be clear, the Veil Guard isn't the open-world playground that Inquisition was. As game director Corinne Bush has previously stated, it's more mission-based. But what impressed oh, okay. me after the first few hours was how much exploration can still be done in the various regions, as well as the impact the player character, Rook, can have on those regions. And there we go. Oh, snap. Consider it something of a mix of Dragon Age 2 and Inquisition. The more streamlined approach of the former with the yeah, we can't, we can, and sociopolitically oh, diverse crazy. world of the latter. We can make our own like, decisions and stuff like that. Of course, some of the bigger art style, combat, and gameplay changes will be subject to personal taste. But after my time with the Veil Guard, I left feeling like these 10 long years just might have been worth the wait. How long, bro, wait, how long is this franchise? 10 years? Huh? As fans have already seen from the first gameplay trailer, players are dropped right into the city of Minrathis in the middle of the action as Solus prepares a ritual that will devastate Thetis. Did you say a ritual? Our old friend Varric has recruited you to help, oh. and it barely takes a couple of minutes for the game to... Hey, I bet he can smell what the rock is cooking. Oh my goodness. Oh! After a surprisingly concise story recap from Varric, there are a number of aspects the Veil Guard starts easing you into. For one, the combat. Man, Gone are the days bro. of Dragon Age Origins, more CRPG-inspired tactical system. The combat Offering looks crazy. A style that's a mix of quick action and a mechanic where you can pause and pull up your radial menu. While this absolutely does take some getting used to, and it'll be a gradual process Man, to create bro. what could be a highly customized build while learning all your companions' different abilities, it didn't take me long to actually start having fun with it. Oh, snap. Okay. I largely played mage and rogue builds during my hands-on time and also quickly started to lean on certain companions' abilities. For one, the mage healing ability was essential. For one Ooh, particularly difficult remnant, that was I hard. established a pattern where I was only using Bellara's mana to heal me, dodging and playing it safe when it got too risky. Nev's ability to slow... One more thing. I love the color in this. Like, I, I don't know what it is, I, and I don't know, like, the gaming term from it, you know? I don't know, like I don't know, like the four, like uh, like the four, like syllable word for this, but bro, the color in this game, bro, is, is amazing. Like, I, wowzers. Time like, was also one I kept returning to, offering a bit more control on the battlefield when the situation got a little too fast paced. Hey, and I never pause the video, so you know something is good whenever I pause the video. A warrior around to taunt your enemies out of your way. Like a whole lot in the Veil Guard, combat revolves around your companions, even though you can't fully take control of them like in previous Dragon Age games. Ooh, that animation different was nice. have different combo options together, and there are certainly opportunities to build team synergy. Oh, and you'll want to listen to your companions in combat too, as they'll occasionally drop some useful hints. But combat aside, your dialogue choices, your rook's background, and the frequent decisions you make are immediately important, which shouldn't be too surprising for fans of Bioware games. The dialogue wheel is back, of course, 
as is the approval disapproval system. We haven't got a lot of time. Beric said you had a lead on Solus. You get right to the point. Yeah, that's I the was point. surprised to see that the Veil Guard actually she looks the like somebody of some of your dialogue choices and she looks like an actor. See, you say that it's a variation of the so and so will remember that system, but more specific. But we do have Nev's location now, so take for example my first confrontation. With oh, Solis, is that Eminem? AKA Fenharel, aka the Dread. Oh, I chose Slim a Shady. A humorous approach with him, and at the end of our confrontation, text on the side of the screen informed me that I have traded verbal jabs with Solus. Man, hey, Baldy, suck it up. It was far from the only occurrence of this sort of text, and it leaves me curious as to how your relationships with various characters will build and branch out over time based on your attitude. Speaking of well, who was that on the couch? It quickly became clear to me that there would consours. I right. felt like a real jerk about it, and that was probably the point. Dragon Age the Veil Guard seemed to be telling me right from the start that I'm going to feel like a jerk a lot. Oh, wow. You don't slow down for much, do you? Without spoiling too much, you'll also be able to see some of your progression and choices in the environment around you as well. But once introductions were out of the way, it was time to explore the wide world of Thetis and see its past and present collide. Shall we? Uh-oh. Jump into the world. I know a little bit about this game though, because I react to like a, like a uh, information video about this game. As mentioned earlier, one of my biggest worries was that the Veil Guard could end up being more linear in its approach trading branching gameplay for a straight line. And Bro, sure, oh the opening goodness. hours, essentially the tutorial zone, are a little railroady, save Man, this for a game couple key decisions crazy. you can make. But once you're past that and more established with an act one, you're much more free to tackle quests as you please as you unlock more and more regions. You who do made this? this? Hold on, I gotta look, at, I gotta look this up. For those of you who aren't brushed up on your Dragon Age lore, that's a nexus between the waking world of Thetis and the metaphysical realm of the Fade through which the ancient elves would travel through magical mirrors called Alluvians. You now use the Alluvians for that same purpose, and to unlock new regions, you have to fight through certain areas of the crossroads before you can start fast traveling to them. Oh. Unlocking said regions opens up a vast network of areas, and not unlike past Dragon Age games, they're dramatically different from one another. As the gods champion. Oh, thanks, Brew. Take, for example, the Arlithan Forest, a gorgeous, colorful region that mixes greenery with elven magic. You can see nugs burrow into the grass, magical artifacts abound, Man, and there's a vast array of nature to simply admire. You're hit with a massive tone shift, however, when you head to Hosberg. Lavendel Village. Whatever happened here. So, Bioware made this game? Bro, hey, under siege salute the to them. This game looks crazy. You'll see some of the more horror inspired aesthetics, and frankly, just some of the grosser aspects of the blight. While the Veil Guard's tone certainly leans more high fantasy in places like the Crossroads, don't worry. Those who miss the gore and dark fantasy of Origins will find that too in places where the blight has spread. But I couldn't help oh, but spend man. a lot this of my time just running around in Treviso, the bustling city that's home to the Antivan Crows faction. For one thing, a lively city feels like a novelty in Dragon Age. But there was simply so much to explore that I kept getting sidetracked. A merchant with unique items here, a new a quest merchant. To pick up over there, and a random combat encounter over there. I like that though. I like that. I don't mean to cut her off, but I like that though. I like that. How one moment you're in like this little town and everybody's partying. And then you open a door, and there's, and there's just like this is there's there's a menace with the sword. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. And I never thought I'll ever play a game like this, bro. This is hard. Like, I, I, listen, I'm not, bro. Call me whatever you and want, bro. What Glazer, I whatever. I like this. Dog to pet. Because yes, you can pet the cats and dogs. We could pet Ralph, for real. Outside of the cats and dogs, there are some unique ways to interact with the, the environment bro, this as well. Game is, yeah. Each companion has an environmental ability, some of which came in quite handy for me. In I've my been time sleeping in the for years. Forest, like, I, I, I frequently called upon Ballara, whose environmental ability allows her to tinker with magical artifacts. I can definitely play this, bro. In a nice bro. quality of life feature, your companions don't even need to be in your party in order for you to use these abilities. As an aside, another one of my favorite quality of life additions is the fact that party banter pauses and picks up again later if you trigger combat, a cut scene or anything else that would interrupt their dialogue that's right no more awkward standing around in order to hear the complete conversation oh yes 
If you're feeling overwhelmed, the difficulty and accessibility options do allow for about just as much or as little hand-holding as you need. For example, with one Antivan Crow's Quest I was doing, I could turn the navigation on and simply follow the game's guidance, or turn it off and look for clues in the environment to follow. Oh no, I'm gonna need it on. the crow's purple symbol uh, I'm gonna need it on. certain walls. <laughs> Another mark this way. I also just happened to be playing an Antivan Crow Rook while completing this quest, which led to some fun dialogue options. We crows are all the army Antiva has, but it's not like we can feel the garrison. Once I was in the thick of things, I could clearly see the features thick of in the veil guard that boiled down to, okay, okay, we heard the complaints about Inquisition, specifically addressing the infamous Hinterlands problem, which is a reference to the first open world area players visit in Inquisition. The zone was packed with more than 50 side quests, many of which boiled down to mere fetch quests, and it left many players drowning in a bevy of checklists that felt... Is this game out? Is 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 this game out? I'm gonna let the video play. In out. Is this, I'm gonna look this the up. The billboard has boiled this down quite a lot. You're still free to explore, but the scope isn't nearly as dizzying, and the quests point back to the main story, a region or faction, or a companion. Another clear reaction to criticisms of Inquisition are our villains in the Veilguard, Elgrenon and Gilanane. The two elven gods feel much more present throughout the events of the early game than Corypheus, the frankly lackluster baddie of Inquisition. Whatever comes, we're ready for a fight. I need we're this. Easily. Comes out Halloween. I need this. Well, there's a whole lot more I, bro, to who see is she? About. She looks so familiar. Like, why does she look familiar? It comes out Halloween. I'm Blight getting House this. will likely be the most important location of the Veil Guard, serving as the hub for you and your companions. Each one of your companions has their own room, and conveniently, a light shines outside of their door when they have a cutscene available. Once you get further into Act 1, it certainly starts to feel more lived in, and you can discover some pretty charming character quirks. For example, I found that Emmerich's skeletal assistant Manfred enjoys spending time on the balcony, and we even got a few games of rock, paper, scissors in. The lighthouse is also, obviously, where you're able to do some housekeeping, especially when it comes to the caretaker. Offer, dweller. I will answer. This wildly uh, helpful okay. spirit is always standing by to help you enchant and upgrade armor for you and your companions. Oh, okay. But I found the lighthouse okay, somewhat deep symbolic voice. of one of the biggest challenges this game is facing. Bringing in new players while honoring the now incredibly vast lore that Dragon Age has built across the games, comic books, short stories, and more. Comic Basically, books. if you were worried that the name change from Dragon Age Dreadwolf would mean less Solus, think again. His history, along with the history of the other elven gods, is baked into the lighthouse. And you learn more and more about the threat you face as you unlock Solus's murals with various wolf statues. Wait, how much? You wait, get wait. to see some of his memories firsthand. Blame the gods who can protect Wait, wait this game got comic books? You will. As a lore nerd, I very much appreciated this, as well as the various other callbacks to series history. The Origins fans will likely love the Grey Warden heavy quests, and we already know the Inquisitor will be involved in some way, as you can recreate them and select your world Man, states in the character he creator. Built? But I do wonder if it'll overwhelm new players, which Bioware certainly seems to be courting with its action-heavy combat system. Oh no, I'm not gonna be overwhelmed. Helps, at least to have something of an outsider like Rook to take the helm of the Veilguard. Plus, the scrappiness of Rook reminded me a bit of playing as Hawk in Dragon Age 2, rather than the more Chosen One-esque protagonist of the Warden in Origins and the Inquisitor in Inquisition. In short, a lot changed in Dragon Age the Veilguard, but there was so much I was relieved to see stay. The focus on companions and romance, the rich lore, and a gorgeous world to explore. It goes without saying that there's still a ton of the Veilguard that I haven't seen, especially if it's as big as Origins and Inquisition, and it certainly seems like it. But after finishing my preview, I found myself even more eager to dive into it, and much more hopeful that this could be the hit Bioware needs. I think that's about it. Bro. It comes out October 31st. I reacted, I reacted to the 22 minutes gameplay. I thought it was absolutely amazing. Never played a game like this before. Um, I'm blown away. I'm blown away completely. Um... The gameplay even looks, bro. The gameplay looks absolutely amazing, bro. I've been sleeping for this long. I, I, I've been, I've been, and I've been, I've been like Snow White for the past like ten years. I didn't know this. I didn't know this game was a thing, like until like a month ago. Um, yeah, I'm getting the game. October thirty first, I'm getting it. 
I don't care what you bro. Listen, I don't care if I have to wait next year. I'm getting the game. It's so crazy how you might not know that a game exists for like some years, and then like, like one video can like change. Well, this is like this is technically like the second video. The first video that I did was from uh, Dragon Age. It was a 22 minute like gameplay showcase, or whatever. And I thought the game looked absolutely amazing. They were going over like you know, what is this called? What is that called? And how you can like make your own like uh like dialogue decisions and stuff like that. I was like, oh okay, that's pretty cool. Like you know, and I, bro, I'm a new booty. You know, I'm 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 a newbie. You know, so I don't really know uh, anything about this game, but. For all you Dragon Dragon Age fans out there, man, comment down below. Um, tell your boys some more information about the game. See you guys later, some max. Some max on the mile. I can't even talk. Wow. October 31st. I'm marking that down. This game is hard, bro. This game is actually hard. I'm not joking. This game is really hard, bro. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and like the video.